Hello students, so welcome to my channel English Wave. My name is Gurbhesh Ram and today we are going to discuss a poem from your Beehive book of 9th class CBSE and the name of the poem is Road Not Taken which is written by Robert Frost. So before I start discussing it line by line followed by some common questions based on the poem which are likely to come in your exams let us know something about the author Robert Frost. Isse pehle ki hum poem ka detailed analysis karein aur kuch questions discuss karein thoda author ke baare mein jaan leti. Robert Frost was an American poet of 20th century and is regarded as one of the most popular and critically acclaimed poets of the history. Critically acclaimed poet hota hai that generally receives good reviews from critics. And moreover, he has also won the Pulitzer Prize for Poetry. Do you know what is Pulitzer Prize? Pulitzer Prize is given for the outstanding contribution in books, drama and journalism. So this was the little information about the, our writer. Now we'll move on to our next section. That is analysis of the title of the poem, Road Not Taken. In this poem, Robert Frost himself is a narrator and he has made a fascinate use of two roads as a metaphor for life. Metaphor means symbolic meaning. The two roads serve as a metaphor for the choices we make in life. Thus, the roads are in fact two alternative ways of life. The choice we make has a far-reaching consequences. Poet says that the path we don't choose in our life is the road not taken. And he describes his feelings about that choice that he had left in the past. The path which we have chosen decides our future, our destination. Means poet ne do roads ko life ke do decision ki tarah liya hai. Poet road pe ja raha hai aur उनके रास्ते में दो ऑप्शंस आ गए हैं तो आप कैसे डिसाइड करोगे कि कौन सा रास्ता लेना है आप और वो रास्ता चूज करने का आपके फ्यूचर पर क्या इफेक्ट होगा हाउ चूजिंग एनी वन ऑफ द बोथ फेज विल इफेक्ट योर फ्यूचर सो पॉइंट इस बात पे डिलेमा में है मींस दिस पॉइम इलेबोरेट्स अपॉन द नरेटर्स इन द सीजन and uncertainty about making the choices he makes in life. So this was all about the title of this poem. So let's start analyzing the poem stanza by stanza. First we will see the stanza 1. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry, I could not travel both. And be one traveler, long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Two roads diverged means got separated and took a different direction or we can say split into two ways. Here we can see that this is a single road and it is diverging into two roads means ek road se aage jaake do raste ban rahe there are two paths on the same road and he has to choose one out of them two roads diverged in a yellow wood yellow wood means here it's a fall season and in this season most of the trees shed their leaves and these leaves turn yellow that's why the poet refers yellow wood. और यहाँ पे yellow wood का जो symbolic meaning है ना, जो symbolic meaning लिया गया है, वो है old age people. Means he is in a such a place where older people live, and he is comparatively younger than those older people. So symbolic meaning of meaning of yellow wood is here older or grey-haired people and sorry 
I could not travel both. So in this line, there is a tone of regret in the poet's voice when he says that he is sorry even though he wishes to travel on both the roads. But he will have to choose one to move ahead. So in this line, the poet feels a regret because he wants to go to both roads. जाना चाहता है बट ऑब्वियसली उसे एक ही चूज करना पड़ेगा एंड बी वन ट्रेवलर लॉन्ग आई स्टूड एज ही इज ओनली वन ट्रेवलर एंड कुड नॉट ट्रेवल बोथ फेस सो ही कीप स्टैंडिंग देयर इन डिलेमा ऑफ विच वे टू फॉलो पॉइंट कहता है कि वो एक ही ट्रेवलर है और दोनों रास्तों पर नहीं ट्रेवल कर सकता तो वहीं पे पॉइट काफी टाइम रुका रहता है और ये सोचते हुए कि कौन सा रास्ता पकड़े स्टैंडिंग इन देयर फॉर डिलेमा स्टैंडिंग देयर इन डिलेमा मींस स्टैंडिंग देयर फॉर लॉन्ग टाइम एंड लुक डाउन वन एज फॉर एज आई कुड टू वेयर इट बेंट इन द अंडरग्रोथ अंडरग्रोथ मींस डेंस बुशेस एंड ट्रीज and bent means turn and he's trying to see where the roads go but he can only see up to the first bend as his view is obstructed by the undergrowth that is dense bushes and trees the poet yahan pe kya kar raha hai wo yahan pe khada ho ke dono raston ko raston ko dhyan se dekh raha hai aur jahan tak uski nazar ja rahi hai वो देख रहा है बिकॉज इज जस्ट एनालाइजिंग द पाथ एंड ट्राइंग टू नो हाउ गुड पाथ इट इज एंड इज इट अप्रोप्रिएट फॉर ट्रेवलिंग और नॉट तो ऐसे ही पॉइंट ने लाइनों को लाइफ से रिलेट किया है लाइफ में भी बहुत बार हमारे पास चॉइसेस होती हैं और हम एनालिसिस करते हैं कि हमने कौन सा रास्ता चूज करना है कौन सा रास्ता हमारे फ्यूचर के लिए सही है अच्छा है तो दिस वॉज ऑल अबाउट द स्टैंडा वन द लेट्स मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट स्टैंडा देन टूक द अदर जस्ट एज फेयर एंड हैविंग पर बैटर क्लेम बिकॉज इट वॉज ग्रासी एंड वॉन्टेड वियर दो एज फॉर दैट द पासिंग देयर हैड वॉन दम रियली अबाउट द सेम Let's see the meaning and explanation. Then he just took one path, and by considering it fair, fair means as good as other one. He's just comparing the two paths, and having perhaps the better claim. Perhaps means shayad. Better claim means better option. The poet pehle ek raste ko analysis analyze kar raha hai. काफी लंबे समय तक लेकिन फिर वो दूसरा रास्ता चूज कर लेता है तो ये सोचते हुए कि ये रास्ता भी उतना ही अच्छा है इनफैक्ट थोड़ा बेटर ऑप्शन है एज कम्पेयर टू द प्रीवियस वन बिकॉज इट वॉज ग्रासी ग्रासी मीन्स फुल ऑफ ग्रास और वी कैन से अनयूज एंड वॉन्टेड वियर वॉन्टेड वियर मीन्स नेवर यूज so here poet is giving the reason why he chose this path because it was full of grass because not many people has taken this way and wanted wear means which had not been used for long time to poet ye rasta isliye chunta hai kyunki ye pura grass se bhara hua hai aur use lagta hai ki is raste pe koi gaya nahi hoga this is less used to as for that the passing there had won them really about the same but when he was passing through this path he realized that both the ways were equally used by the people aur hamari life mein bhi aisa hi hota hai jab hamare paas do ya do se zyada options hoti hain to hum apni utmost wisdom ke sath ek rasta chunte hain और हम ये सोचते हैं कि हमने बेटर पाथ चूज किया है लेकिन आगे जाके पता चलता है कि दोनों रास्ते सेम ही थे 
on both the ways we have to face difficulties and challenges so this was all about this stanza let's move on to the third stanza and both that morning equally lay by in leaves no step had trodden black trodden means walked over here poet says that morning both ways were similar as no one had visited that way on that particular morning both the ways had leaves on them and no one has stepped over them because all the leaves were green and not turned black poet kehta hai ki us morning mein koi bhi us raste par nahi gaya aur sare leaves fresh aur green hain क्योंकि किसी ने भी उन पत्तों पर पैर नहीं रखा है ओ आई कैप द फर्स्ट फॉर अनदर डे येट नोइंग हाउ वे लीड्स टू वे देन ही सेज दट आल कीप द फर्स्ट पार्ट फॉर अनदर डे ऑल दो ही नोज दैट वेन वी चूज वन पाथ देन देर इज नो वे बैक वी कैन नॉट रिटर्न एंड टेक द अदर पाथ because the path we choose takes us to another path and so on to yahan point ye samjhane ki koshish kar raha hai ki life mein bhi jab hum ek rasta choose karte hain to hamare paas option nahi rehta ki hum wapas ja ke apni choice ko change kar sake but still point thinks that i'll keep this way for another day let's study the last stanza I shall be feeling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence sigh means having a deep breath and hence here is it is it is used for the future so here poet trying to say that how his future got affected by the choice he had made in the past and in the future I'll say with a deep breath that once upon a time i had reached a point where were two paths i had been traveled on that road which had been less traveled by the people and this choice has brought a lot of difference in my life and made me what i am today so if i'll say the central idea of this poem is that we should be very careful while making choices for our future because our choices decide our future so that's all with this poem let's discuss some literary devices used in this poem first device is symbolism symbolism is the use of symbols to signify ideas and qualities by giving them symbolic meanings that are different from their literal sense for example here two roads represent two choices that we make in our life ek word ko symbolize karke life se relate karna that is symbolism the next device is anaphora anaphora is when same word is repeated at the starting of two or more lines and here we can see second third and fourth lines are starting with the same word and this word is and so let's discuss rhyme scheme of the poem rhyme scheme of the entire poem is a b a a b would stood and could is a a a then both and growth these are rhyming and this is b and b so our next device is alliteration alliteration is when two or more consecutive words start with the same consonant sound for example wanted and wear starting with the same sound wa sound the do sound is repeating here that is do as for that the passing there do sound is repeating here that is also alliteration the next device is repetition repetition is repeated use of words to emphasize the meaning for example ages and ages so ages word is getting repeated here so this is repetition 
so this was all about the literary devices now let's discuss some important questions based on this poem our first question is why will the choice between two roads that seems very much alike make such a big difference many years later in the life of poet our question is that two roads which are similar to each other इन दो रोड्स में चॉइस करना पॉइंट की लाइफ में इतने साल बाद इतना बड़ा डिफरेंस क्यों ला रहा है सो एज वी हैव स्टडीड द पॉइम थॉरली सो वी कैन इजिली आंसर इट आई वॉन्ट यू टू पॉज दिस वीडियो हेयर एंड ट्राई टू राइट ऑन योर ओन आंसर सो लेट सी द आंसर अ चॉइस बिटवीन टू रोड्स दैट सीम वेरी मच अलाइक will make such a big difference many years later in the poet's life since this particular decision this path opened up many different opportunities for him in the future the decision that he that he now makes will influence him and his life and his rest of the decisions since the two roads are same they still have varied options in them so this was our answer let's move on to the next question question second does the poet feel that he has made the wrong choice in taking the road less traveled by if not why does he sigh what does he regret about kya poet ye feel kar raha hai ki usne kam traveling wala road leke galat choice ki thi अगर नहीं तो फिर उसने साई क्यों किया साई मीन्स हैविंग डीप ब्रेथ और ऐसा यूज ऐसा उसे किस चीज का रिग्रेट है सो लेट्स सी द आंसर सो आर आंसर वुड बी नो द स्पीकर डज नॉट फील दैट ही हैज मेड अ रॉन्ग डिसीजन बाय टेकिंग द रोड लेस ट्रेवल्ड द पॉइंट वॉन्ट टू एक्सप्लोर मोर एक्सप्लोर The poet wanted to explore both the roads. He tells himself that he will explore one, and then come back and explore the other. But he knows that he will probably be able to do so. So this is our answer. Let's move on to the next question, question number three. What do the two roads symbolize in the poem? This is very easy question, and the answer is. the two roads symbolize the choices that one has to make in life so it's very important to make the right choice because we can never retrace our path and go back one road would lead on to another and there is no coming back let's move to the fourth question what does the choice made by the poet indicate about his personality let's see the answer the poet chose the road less traveled by this indicates that he believes in charting his own path in life rather than doing what others expect him to do he is adventurous and loves to take a risk in life he wants to stand out in the crowd Let's move to the last question question number 5 What do you mean by wanted wear according to the poem This is bit easy this means something that has not been used for long time which is unused for long time So that's all for this video if you like this video please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to have the notifications of new videos as I'll upload the video you will get the notifications of this I'll see you in the next video thanks for watching